Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 16.5 beta three has been out for a few days. I've been using it full time on my 14 pro max, as well as my iPad pro 12.9. We'll take a look at the experience, not just my experience, but your experience based off the YouTube community poll where there's over 6,000 votes and over 80 comments. We'll also take a look at the overall bugs, battery life, and some Apple news and what to expect with the next versions of iOS. Now, the first thing is iOS 16.4.1 has a bug with the weather not being accurate. So with 16.4.1, it seems there's an issue where sometimes the weather is not showing the correct temperature based on other things you may have, whether that's a temperature gauge in your house or different places online. I've heard this from multiple people, but let me know if it's an issue for you. As far as new features with iOS 16.5 beta three, well, there's more and more people messaging me saying they're actually getting a splash screen when they go to update their apps in the app store. So if you go into the app store, then you tap on your ID or your name in the upper right. When they go to update their different apps, sometimes they're getting a splash screen and it looks like this. So it looks like this, where it says automatic downloads for in-app content. Some apps require in-app content to be downloaded before you can use them. Apps can now run automatically in the background to download this content before you first launch them. Now this feature has been around for a while, but this splash screen keeps popping up for many people. Now they've actually removed a feature since beta two. So beta two and beta three no longer have the feature where you can screen record using Siri. So if you try it with Siri, record my screen, you'll see here it's thinking. Let's see what happens. It says it can't help me. Let's try it one more time. Record the screen. And it says, I can't help you with that. So for some reason they've removed this. I'm not sure why. Hopefully they add it back with the final versions. Also in the Apple news app, there's something new that while it's not new necessarily with beta three, we do have the sports button, but also if we go into an article, you'll see with beta three on the right and 16.4.1 on the left within the news app, if you're in an article in the upper right, you have a thumbs up and thumbs down. If you tap on those, you can see suggest more or suggest less. So that's available in beta two and beta three where it's not in previous versions. Within the wallet app, more and more people are starting to see Apple pay later as an option. My friend will actually saw this and posted this on Twitter. You'll see, it says, looks like Apple pay later is continuing to roll out early access. And there's a screenshot here where it says early access and it says pay over time with no interest or fees. If you actually have early access, let me know in the comments below. I'm not seeing it yet though. Now, Mac OS 13.4 beta three actually removes the Bitcoin wallpaper that was found within the code in previous Mac OS versions that was found some time ago. And it looks like they finally actually removed it. There was some concerns with this. Maybe it was there as just sort of a sample or a joke, but either way, it's no longer there. Also every year we get new watch faces and watch bands for pride. And that was actually found recently in code with the latest iOS updates. So you'll see, it says, here is your first look at the pride 2023 Apple Apple watch band and Apple watch face found with the help of Nicholas 09 F nine. So this gives you an idea of what it could look like. We may see this very soon since it was found recently. Now, as far as app updates, one thing I wanted to mention is YouTube music. YouTube is now rolling out podcasts on YouTube channels. And now there's actually an option. Let's see if we can refresh here. There we go at the top of YouTube music. So there's now a podcast section where you can actually go in, find some of your favorite podcasts, go in and listen to those within the YouTube music app. So I'm not sure why they're separating them out from YouTube themselves, but you'll be able to find them there and probably other places in the future. Now, one thing I'm not hearing anymore is the problem people were having with it prompting for iCloud passwords over and over. No one has messaged me in the past week saying that this was an issue. And so I'm not sure if they fixed it or not, but if they did fix it, it would be on the back end server side where they've actually fixed this since they didn't have to do an update to do that. So it looks like it may be fixed for a lot of people. Also, one thing I wanted to mention is I did a video some time ago with iMessage on windows. Microsoft is now rolling out the ability to use iMessage with the phone link app. It was previously only available to windows insiders, but is now available to everyone on windows 11. I have a video showing how to set it up, how it works and what its limitations are. So be sure to check that out. I'll link it in the description. iOS 16.5 features seem to be fairly sparse compared to iOS 16.4. Like I mentioned before with beta three, 
3, I thought we would gain a little bit more, but with beta one, we had the ability to turn screen recording on and off using Siri, which has since been removed. I also mentioned how we had the updates with news, so that may stay. We also no longer had a beta profile after beta two. It auto deletes itself, even though it's still technically there if you're a developer. And you also now have the ability to install an update if you're below 50% charge and you're not plugged in. Beta 3 added bug fixes and wording changes in the code, so it's been pretty small so far. iOS 16.6 is in testing, and we could see all the way up to iOS 16.8 like we have in the past before, but we'll have to wait and see since September is when they typically release the next version to the public. So with iOS 17, usually before that we'll have iOS 16 updates with small improvements until that point. But you never know what Apple's going to do. Maybe they're just holding back to put more features into iOS 17. So we should see iOS 16.5 betas for a few more weeks. We'll talk about that in a moment. As far as future Apple products, I did want to mention a couple things. Apple is apparently working on making it possible to pair Apple Watch with more than one device. Instead of just allowing you to pair it with one iPhone, you could use it with iPhone, iPad, or Mac. And this is according to 941 on Twitter. Also, the same leaker said that Apple is working on a special version of iPad OS 17 for larger iPads. So if the 12.9 inch iPad isn't large enough, there could be a 14.1 inch launching sometime early next year. I love the huge iPads and as they add functionality to it, maybe they'll have some more features or more multitasking compared to what we have with smaller variants. That could come along with the M3 chip. Also, a recent report from the information's Wayne Ma detailed that Apple's been working on Siri for years with teams competing on different methodologies. One was codenamed Blackbird, which is lightweight and would run on devices, and the other was called Siri X, or 10, for its 10th anniversary. The competition and lack of focus apparently is what's delaying Siri from being on the level of Google along with privacy that Siri employs. Apple could be working on integrating a new AI model, though, similar to what we have with ChatGPT at some point. So maybe we'll see an enhanced Siri. We know they've been talking about AI. That makes a lot of sense, but we'll have to see if they've do, they do anything with iOS 17. When it comes to iPhone 15, there's been some recent news with different mock-ups or renders or samples of iPhone 15. Apparently, it looks like we have a smaller camera bump than initially thought. Due to the thickness of the phone, Apple's able to push the camera in a little bit, so it looks like it's going to be smaller. Also, I wanted to show you what the action button could look like that's supposed to replace the actual silent switch. So we would have a button that's programmable there instead of a silent switch. I know I would welcome that since I just put it on silent and I leave it. Typically, once I take it out of the box, it stays on silent most of the time. Also, Apple's apparently working on ear pods with USB-C, according to Shrimp Apple Pro on Twitter. That makes sense since iPhone 15s and AirPod cases should feature USB-C in the near future. That's to comply with different rules around the world, so everything would move to USB-C. That makes a lot of sense. Now, as far as iOS 17, I did a video the other day talking about the latest leaks and rumors where we expect a journaling app, changes to the health app, as well as lock screen customization updates, app library updates, and more. Be sure to check that out if you haven't already. As far as the iOS 16.5 beta three experience, it's been pretty stable so far. I'm pretty impressed with it. Cell service seems to be improved for me, meaning it's not dropping a signal. I took a trip the other day. It had no issues other than some speed issues, but that's carrier related. I didn't drop signal. I had no Wi-Fi, and it worked pretty well. Bluetooth is okay, but my album art is sometimes messed up in my car over Bluetooth. So it does connect. Sometimes it crackles a little bit, but with AirPods, it seems to be okay. So if we bring in AirPods Pro 2, give it a second to connect, they tend to connect okay. Takes just a second here. There we go. It pops up on my phone. Seems to work fine. I haven't had any issues. A couple people do mention that it crackles a little bit and there's been some connectivity issues, but for the most part, it seems to be pretty good. There have been complaints with CarPlay though with Bluetooth. So the same thing that's showing up as far as Bluetooth with my car album art may be affecting that. The phone in general is staying nice and cool for most. We'll take a look at heat in a moment, but there are still some bugs. Notifications still seems to be a little bit glitchy. So if I scroll down here, you can see that. If I bring it up, it overlays and then sort of snaps into place. So definitely some odd bugs there. And there's also issues with the health app. If I go into health and then go to medications, tap on the medication, it crashes every time. So I have submitted that to feedback. If we go back into medications, you'll see here, I try to remove it or edit it. I can archive it, but if I tap on the log itself, it crashes. So there's definitely some odd issues.
Some people are saying the MagSafe animation isn't working properly either. That's both with the cases and with the wallet. And if I bring in the case here, the MagSafe wallet case it seems to work for me. The cases seem to work as well, but if it's a third party case, or maybe you have an iPhone 13, but you're using a 14 case with it, the 14 case will not show that that's not a bug that's intentional, but in general, that should work. Also, there are reports of some app crashes. So Apple probably made some changes to the code that will need to be updated in the third party developer codes as well to make things more stable, but it seems to be pretty good overall. As far as the camera, I'm hearing most people say that it just isn't fixed at this point. They want the ability to turn off HDR. And if we take a look at the camera here, let's take a picture with the lights off. See if it's any different this time around. There we go. Turn off the second light. Let's snap a picture. We'll take a screenshot, see if it's any different. And let's see if there's any improvements. I don't think there will be, but it seems that this is something Apple just doesn't care about as they're not addressing it anywhere. And if you're wondering if you should install iOS 16.5 beta three at this point, I don't see the reason unless you're a developer, if you want to try it out, you can, as far as a public beta, as it's quite stable, but don't expect the best battery life with betas as they're still working on things. They're also logging things in the background to try and make it better. But if you are having issues, make sure you report them in feedback. As far as iOS 16.5 beta fours release, it could be the release candidate also. So iOS 16.5 RC, that's what we had last time, or we could have a beta four rather, and then an RC, and that could be Tuesday or Wednesday. Typically after beta three, we go to a weekly schedule. So we can expect something next week. If Apple continues to do that with maybe a final release in the next couple of weeks. Then we'll move on to iOS 16.6 and also iOS 17 and June 5th. So it's iOS 17 beta one should be expected on June 5th. If they continue to do what they do every year, expect it then at WWDC. As far as the overall battery life, let's first take a look at battery health. We'll go down to battery, battery health and charging. You'll see I'm at 97% with 169 cycles, according to coconut battery. So I think it's doing okay. Not as good as it did last year, using it the exact same way, putting it on the charger every night, still some odd issues here and there. As far as my overall battery itself, let's take a look. Yesterday is a rare exception where it was plugged in on a car most of the day, but the day before I had three hours and 21 minutes of screen active time, seven hours and 57 minutes of screen idle time and used over 60% of my battery. So that's not very good. The day before had six hours and I used about 90% of my battery. So that's probably a little bit better, but I should be getting well over 10 hours. So they need to improve this. I've tried to customize my home and lock screen to make sure it shuts everything off and it's still creating an issue. I am getting better battery life, but not what I should be. As far as performance, performance seems to be fine. I haven't had any slowdowns. I did see somebody say that they did have it slow down a little bit, but ProMotion is super fast scrolling using different apps on other phones. If we go into the camera on an iPhone 11, you'll see it opens right up. If we go back out, go into music, it's loading off Wi-Fi just fine. Or if we go into anything else, it seems to be nice and fast. Go into weather, You'll see it just takes a second to load from Wi-Fi. That's what takes the longest. And this is taking a while. There we go. So in general, it's pretty good. It's not perfect, but it seems to be pretty good as far as performance and fairly stable. I did rerun benchmarks on this device and the other devices, starting from left to right with the iPad Pro 12.9 with the M2 processor. We have 2,493 for single core, 9,431 for multi-core. iPhone 11 has 1,756 for single core, 3,836 for multi-core. And the 14 Pro Max is 2,525 and multi-core is 6,253. So pretty good overall, and they're staying nice and cool. In fact, I just reran the benchmark scores on the iPhone 11 and it's staying nice and cool. If we flip this over, they're cool to the touch. And this isn't, isn't really too much of a concern for most people as iOS regulates it on its own. But many of you like to see the actual thermal camera. So let's take a look. We have 92.8 degrees Fahrenheit. And on the iPhone 11, it's about the same 92 degrees or so 92.7 is the highest I saw. And we have 33.5 is the highest I saw there on the iPhone 11 and 33.9 or 34 degrees on the iPhone 14 pro max. So pretty good overall, no concerns there. Many people really shouldn't be concerned with this as like I said, Apple regulates that.
Now, as far as the overall comments on the YouTube community poll, let's take a look at a few of those. Chuck Leah 5898 said, I feel like the battery was better before the iOS 16.5 beta three update. I was going to around 30% battery life at the end of the day and average day to day around 28 to 25%. That being said, I haven't noticed any other bugs during my daily usage. Healthy Healing said, I'm on beta three using iPhone 12. It's been so, so battery is not great for me. One bug I continue to have is with YouTube. Actually, I will be watching a video and then suddenly the screen just goes black. I have to close the video and restart. I've had this issue for a while now. Now that could be something specifically with the YouTube app and they need to update that. Raul Fernandez two said, I'm running iOS 16.5 beta three on my iPhone 14 pro been good so far with no issues. Unidentified noob said, I'm on iOS 16.5. 4.1 and I think there are less noticeable bugs apart from having the weather show minus 12 C for some reason, but it only happened once. I also noticed a bug on iPad OS 16.4.1 where cropping a screenshot right after taking it and saving that screenshot makes it revert to original without crop and it drives me crazy. So lots of little issues. 16.4.1 seems to have more than 16.5 beta three so far. So that's good. And it seems to be stable and moving in the right direction. And so that's everything with iOS 16.5 beta three, look for beta four or the release candidate as soon as Tuesday or Wednesday. Let me know if you've found anything else in this particular update. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.